What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. Before we get into today's video, I'd like for you guys to do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. That way we can break the YouTube algorithm and get this video out to more people. And if by the end of the video you find the information useful and or helpful, go and hit that like button, turn on post notifications so you know when I'm uploading new content like this. With that being said, let's get into today's video. All right guys, so welcome back to my how-to series. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at diagnosing a crank no start. So the last video that we put out, it was a no crank, no start. So that one's kind of pointing towards a ignition problem as far as the key, um, ignition switch or starter problem. So that's separate. This one, the car does start, so obviously the starter is good, but the engine will not turn over. So what we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at either a fuel problem or an ignition problem as far as you know coils and things like that. Cam sensor, crank sensor. So the easiest way to pick a system you wanna look at, whether it be the fuel system or electronically as far as crank sensor or coils, what I prefer to do is grab a can of starting fluid, shoot some in the intake and go ahead and proceed to start it. Obviously if the engine fires up momentarily, then you know you're looking at a fuel system problem. If it does not start, does not necessarily mean you're not looking at a fuel problem, but you're probably going to be looking at something as far as a crank sensor or if it has a large coil pack and something along those lines. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to get to canning starting fluid, we're going to spray some in the intake duct, and we're going to see what happens. All right, guys, so this particular technique is going to be specific to this car, obviously. But what you want to go and do is you want to go ahead and remove the air filter, or at least gain uh, access to the air filter housing. This one, obviously, I can slide right out. If not, you can lift it up and spray it in direct. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to spray some inside the throttle horn and we're going to go ahead and attempt to crank it and see what happens. All right, so obviously it wants to start. So that kind of points towards it being a fuel problem. So. I'm gonna to explain to you what the next step is gonna do if you're assuming that the problem is fuel related. All right guys, so the next step, what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and get to the fuel pump really on this particular car, it's right here on the bottom. And I'm just gonna make sure we have power going to it and we have power going through it when we cycle the key on. So on most cars, when you cycle the key to the run position but don't start it, fuel pump is gonna come up and prime for a little bit and then the fuel pump relay is gonna go ahead and shut off. So what you wanna go ahead and do is go ahead and probe the outlet side of it and make sure you're getting fuel, or I mean, you make sure you're getting power coming in and you have power coming out the load side. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I'm gonna get my relay buddy, get the power probe, and we're gonna see if we have power going through it. All right guys, so we have the relay buddy hooked up. We have the fuse, or the relay put back in. I got my power probe right here. Let me try and get it to where you guys can keep it right here. I don't want to block the path of the key because I got to start it. Mm, okay, that should be fine. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm just going to check to see if we have at least power on two of them. Key is in the run position. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and I believe this ground one is probably going to be the one that goes to the pump. We'll figure that out right now. Okay, as you've seen, it switched to power. Relay turned off. So obviously we're getting power through the relay. So that's fine. So let's go move on to the next step. All right, so for the next step, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to verify under the car. Now the, the location of your fuel pump connector is going to differ from car to car. Some are going to be under the seat, uh, some you can remove the bed of the vehicle to gain access if your car is a truck. Others, like in this case, have to actually get under the car and get to the fuel pump connector itself. So I may have to drop the tank, I'm not entirely sure. It may have an intermediate connector. We'll see when we get under there. Next step you want to do is you want to go ahead and probe the line going into the fuel pump, the power line, and go ahead and cycle the key again and see if you have power getting to the pump. If you have power getting to the pump, and you have ground, then obviously your fuel pump is gonna be faulty. Now, if you have no power, then the next step you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to go from the interior fuse box or wherever your fuel pump relay is located and basically trace that wire back to see where you're missing. So obviously you're gonna have a open wire 
somewhere. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to verify that the, the circuit is fine and I want to make sure I'm getting power to the pump. If I am and ground is there at the pump as well, then we need a fuel pump on this car. So let me go ahead and check that. I'll show you how to do it, especially on this car, and then we'll go from there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is I'm going to go ahead and get under the car. I'm going to check the ground circuit first. We're going to make sure we have ground. Okay, ground is good. So there's the ground right there. And then we're going to back probe the power circuit. I'm going to try and keep this steady, if I could. Maybe put it right here, maybe. And then I'm going to attempt to catch it on camera. I don't know if I can, but we're going to try and see if we have power when we cycle the key. So let me get into the car. See if I can get the better on camera. All right, we're gonna try and crank it. And then we have power right there. All right there, so there you have it guys. It's fairly easy to check a fuel pump. It's not too complicated. Some fuel pumps are hard to gain access to. Obviously this one, we were doing the fuel pump after it got sold. So I went ahead and showed you it with the fuel tank out just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see the connector. But this connector on this particular car and it's specific to this car, is accessible from the top underneath the passenger seat on the second row so it's not that bad uh, most modern cars are coming out to having the fuel pump where you can gain them from the back seat you just take off the back seat and there's usually an access panel on most passenger vehicles trucks like i said you can take off the bed and you can get access to the fuel pump there suvs they're going to kind of differ most of the time for an suv you do have to drop the fuel tank so checking the fuel pump you make sure you have power going into it. If you have power going into it and everything is fine and you have ground, then obviously that's pointing towards the fuel pump like we have here. All right guys, so that's gonna go and do it for today's video. If you found something useful in today's video, go ahead and give this video a like and a share. And also if you guys have any questions automotive related, you guys need wiring diagrams, second opinions, or just a tip on something, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I can respond to you guys via DM. Uh, until I see you guys in the next video, you guys have a good one.